universe. We're back again talking about Batwoman, episode two, The Rabbit Hole. And uh, it picks up pretty much where we left off, where Kate is becoming Batwoman in her quest of finding out what really happened to her sister Beth, suspecting at the end of the last episode that the new supervillain and Alice in Wonderland themed Alice is actually her long lost sister Beth. So that kind of starts her on this mystery of uh, shanghaiing uh, Luke into helping her with the bat weapons and kind of getting him to be the guy in the chair so she can like go and find and search uh, Alice. Meanwhile, her dad, Jacob, and his uh, security force, her private, his private contracting security force, Crows, we'll talk about them in a minute, are tearing up the streets of Gotham, uh, trying to locate her gang as well as her. They even get the permission and go-ahead from the Gotham police department to shoot her on sight. And he won't listen to Kate, who suspects that this is actually his long-lost daughter. You shouldn't probably shoot her before talking to her. And he just will not accept it. She, uh, Alice, by the way, starts playing mind games, showing up at their old childhood home, at their old hangouts, until she has that tete-a-tete uh, -tete with Kate at the, that creepy little moment on the playground. And uh, it actually was serving as a distraction as she goes and tries to kill her stepsister, Mary, who has done nothing wrong to anybody. So, uh, yeah, it ends with um, essentially Alice disappearing once again uh, through a, a really spectacular uh, and subtle explosion that's done on a uh, the bridge in in the middle of uh, Gotham City as she's being carted off by uh, the police department. And that really wonderful moment where she goes and leaps and tries to save her again, this time for real, but it, unable to, you know, Essentially, they get separated through the firefight. And of course, uh, Batwoman is also able to save uh, Mary. And we also see Sophie's um, development trying to figure out where she stands. Uh, she's a top agent in Crows, but she does seem to be conflicted uh, between her uh, loyalty to Jacob and her past relationship with Kate. Okay, that's pretty much where we go uh, from here. Oh, and oh, there's one more thing. And there's a final scene with Jacob's uh, new wife. And uh, let's, see, let's see, what is her name? Catherine. Catherine shows up at the end when uh, they're able to recover a knife with, her, with Alice's blood on it. She tells a mysterious henchman, get rid of it. So, okay, let's, <clears throat> let's uh, break some stuff down. Uh, the way Kate is able to piece together that Alice might be her sister has been really cool. Uh, starting with the realization in the last episode, in the last scene, uh, not to mention we go to, uh, like, the, you know, detective work that she does in this one. Uh, of course, she realizes that the gem on Alice's knife is a garnet because that's uh, the birdstone of uh, Beth and Kate because, of course, garnet would be a Batwoman's birdstone. And I like the fact that basically she tells her, yes, and that I am your sister. That's very obvious. And, of course, there is that doubt because, well, she's a serial killing terrorist supervillain who calls herself Alice. So, of course, you may want to, like, you know, do a test on that DNA. But despite being told over and over again, uh, Jacob won't listen. And this is actually developed really nicely through the flashbacks. Uh, one of the things I had problems with was the narration that I felt overdid it and uh, filling in the backstory, which was understandable. It was the first episode. This time around, we're able to use uh, flashbacks uh, when uh, Jacob and, uh, and when Kate was a child with her dad, Jacob. And we really see how they dealt with uh, losing uh, mom and daughter, uh, respectively, in some really lovely scenes, actually. The scene where he sees that Kate has fallen asleep with the map and he has to tell her that they have found bone fragments that most likely belong to Beth. That's a really beautifully done scene. Uh, Doug Ray Scott is really 
doing some fine acting at that, mo that moment. And it's really ni nicely uh, written as well. It doesn't have the problem of being overwritten that some of the CW shows tend to do. Uh, really nice stuff there. Uh, okay, there. I want to talk about Crows because I haven't really heard this talked about too much, but I'm having some issues with Crows. Uh, it seems like they have like basically stepped up in protecting Gotham in Batman's absence. And they're a contracting security, they're a, con they're a private contractor security force that seem to be allowed to shoot people on site in the streets and even get permission to kill. No trial, just kill, like Judge Dredd or something like that. I have problems with that. Um, that is very similar to, like, from uh, fictional uh, films, o OCP from Robocop, or even in real life, Blackwater, which is a mercenary force that goes into other countries and does some rough stuff and has even been accused of, like, crimes. You wouldn't really want that in an American city, and that's essentially what Crows is doing. And, yeah, I understand that this is very much influenced by... Jacob's uh, sense of loss and regret that he has lost his wife and daughter and in a way trying to prevent that from happening uh, Very you can easily make that comparison to Batman Bruce Wayne's uh, Attempts to you know protect Gotham and how Batman often gets Accused by fans and other characters in universe that he may or may not be kind of a fascist or at least dances dangerously to that uh, mindset I, I think that's something we can do with uh, Jacob here. Now, of course, that really suspicious scene at the end with Catherine ditching evidence uh, definitely lends some ideas of what maybe she's up to. Uh, essentially, she could be just as tied into what uh, Jacob is doing, maybe even more so. You know, it's very possible she is doing the real fishy stuff behind the scenes. Maybe Jacob knows and is willing to look the other way because he wants to get this job done. Uh, he wants to protect people and, you know, in place of, you know, his emotional loss. So, yeah, I feel like that's not really been touched on too much, uh, but I definitely see it going there. And Alice has even talked about that and her motivations. Uh, not just simply blaming uh, Dad for losing me, but I don't know. I think she has some issues with what he's doing uh, in a very uh, Christopher Nolan Joker kind of like uh, attack. And, you know, since these producers love Christopher Nolan's Batman so much, you'll probably see that uh, influence uh, within the storyline and the motivations. So, hey, um, I like this episode quite a bit. I actually liked it better than the pilot episode. Uh, I think it feels a little bit smoother. There are some wonderful scenes. Uh, the budget looks a little bit stronger in this one. Uh, the opening shots with uh, Batwoman on the motorcycle and the fact that she hasn't developed the, the, the wig and uh, black and red costume just yet. It's still in development, which is kind of nice. We get to see it kind of gradually pieced together. So, yeah, I like this episode quite a bit. I think I liked it uh, better than the first one. Um, I may even possibly give this episode a 5 out of 5 Ram Chips. Uh, what did you, the viewers at home, think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. What do you think about uh, what's going on with the show? Uh, do you agree with me? Disagree with me? Who cares? Uh, we can uh, talk uh, in the comments. Uh, you can also uh, like, subscribe to Comic Universe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can get uh, updates on what we guys are doing here at the universe. Uh, and also, hey, I got a channel too. Check out The Real Manos where I talk about all types of stuff. All right, I think that's it for now, and I'll talk to you next week about Batwoman. So push the button, Lindsay.